everyone and welcome to my channel. In today's tutorial, we will be making this adorable dinosaur baby lovey. Um, <clears throat> I got this particular design from Designs by Juju. She just released a bunch of new designs. Um, so not only does she have like a cute dinosaur, but she has like lambs and ducks and foxes and frogs and all different sorts of cute designs, cats and dogs. She has really everything. So this is a really great easy beginner friendly um, design so don't be intimidated by it um so first is the the blanket portion um as you can see you will have your little lovey be here in the corner um it has two little arms you embroider the face and this is what the back looks like and we will be sewing this back closed um, I in the instructions it recommends that you do it hand sewing but I think you can easily do it with your um, machine and it will look totally fine um, especially if you're not like the best hand sewer like myself um, so that's always an option and this would be really great if you wanted to personalize it add a name on the back here so I will go over all of the different items that I create or the uh, requirements for this design um, including a, in the link to, in the description uh, there will be a link to this exact design I decided to do a dinosaur um, as you can see, it has little increments of yellow. So I did yellow for the, the uh, cheeks. Um, and it has different sorts of blues. And I also did the little outline here in the same exact pattern. So I think it just makes it stand out even more. But super cute, super beginner friendly. Don't be intimidated by this design. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing, but it was fairly simple process. Um, so typically the first thing the instructions is stitching out this baby blanket um, It's pretty standard. You just sew it like a regular baby blanket, but leave this corner open to add this embroidery design um, For the embroidery portion, it's super easy So there's two files one for these little arms and then there's also one for this head and the instructions are super easy to read and understand um, as long as you some have some basis of how to embroider and read sewing instructions. But I've looked at many and used many different designs by Juju patterns and they have all been super simple and easy to understand. So you will also need a combination of your, an embroidery machine and a sewing machine. Um, so for this design, it comes in five by seven friendly and also six by 10. So this is a six by 10 size. Um, I believe the di difference is that the head and the arms are just a little bit bigger than what it would be for the 5 by 7 design. I also decided to go with a larger lovey size. So this is a 14 inch lovey, which I just think it's so cute. I mean, can't you picture a little, little baby toddling this around and keeping it forever? And, you know, if you sell it in your Etsy shop or your whatever shop that you have, um, if it gets dirty or lost or anything, they can just purchase from your shop again. And especially if you add a little personalized area there, it would be perfect. So I will now go over a couple of things that I didn't incorporate in the directions and what you need. Uh, so you will need a variety of stabilizer. Um, this pattern recommends cutaway stabilizer, but I use a combination of tearaway stabilizer and no show, no, no, so, no, show, no show polymesh, my gosh, uh, which is essentially a cutaway stabilizer as well, because I wanted to have the option to tear away the stabilizer and have a little, little thin sort of stabilizer to keep the stitches in place. So that's what I decided to do for that. And then for this face, since we were embroidering on Minky, I decided to use one layer of water soluble stabilizer. It essentially prevents the stitches from sinking into the fabric, especially if it's super soft and you can see it, you know, it could easily fall right into the cracks of this design. So that's why I would highly recommend that you also use water soluble stabilizer on this design. But other than that, everything else is what I mentioned in this tutorial. Um, I'm assuming that it'll probably be a fairly long tutorial. So hope you stick around for the ride. Um, because like I said, when I go through this pattern, I, it's my first time doing it. So I really enjoyed doing this. I was really looking forward to this. 
Um, even when I was at work, I was like, oh, I can't wait to make that design because it's always fun making something new and I love to teach you guys how to make things. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. If you do, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing as well. And let me know what other designs do you love from Designs by Juju. And let me know if you have any other patterns that you want me to try. I'd be more than happy to and even possibly post a tutorial for you guys. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video and yeah, have a good one. All right, so let's go over the materials that you'll need for this project. I apologize if you hear tweeting in the background. I have my window open because it's nice and 70 degrees. Um, so here is the main fabric that we're going to use for the outside of the blanket. I just got it all nice and ironed. I also have my instructions printed up here as well. As I mentioned before, I've never done this before, so it'll be a learning experience for us all. So I got this. This is fleece fabric from Joann's, and then I'm going to use this a blue minky dot for the the dinosaur. Then I also have a long ruler to measure out for the lovey. I have a smaller ruler. I have a pen here as well to do my markings. Move these over here. Drop your pen first to start off. So here's another pen, so I'll use that. And then I use it a 12 inch ruler. My other ruler is 24 inches in length. Of course, have your design, a pair of scissors, your rotary cutter. Um, maybe fabric weights would be helpful. I might actually use them, I'm not exactly sure. So I have six of these. And then of course, you're gonna need some pins to pin your fabric. Then you'll also need self-threading needles, embroidery thread, and then also some um, fabric for the ears and the nose. Other than that, you should be good to go. So first, since I have this big old bulky fabric in the way, I'm going to start by cutting out my blanket fabric. As I mentioned before, I am doing the 10 by 10 design, or the uh, six by 10 design. However, you can do it, I believe, in five by seven. So if you have like a P800, you can always use uh, the five by seven design. It would just be about two inches smaller. So now for the blanket, I'm just gonna lay my fabric out here. Try to get the, out as many wrinkles as I could, but stuff happens. So for the 14 by 14 design, I'm going to cut it out 14 inches by 14 inches. Or no, 15 inches by 15 because you wanna have some wiggle room for when you do your sewing, which is what we will work on after we cut out all these pieces. So again, 15 inches by 15 inches. Now, my tip for cutting out your minky is to actually make it about an inch larger than what you're cutting out here because minky moves around a lot, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have plenty of minky when you're pinning your blanket. Okay, so here we are, 14 inches by 14 inches, and it looks perfect, so I'm gonna fold it up and put it to the side or sorry, 15 by 15. That's what it did here. I believe I did. Yes, okay, I did 15 by 15. Yep, looks a little rectangle-ish to me, but it's 15 by 15. Now, like I said, I recommend for the minky fabric, 
that you do it one inch bigger than what it recommends. So I'm going to do 16 inches all around just for the blue minky. And try to make it as flat as possible. So I'm just gonna kind of wrinkle all this up because I don't want it to stretch out my fabric here. We need this cardstock. So again, 16 by 16 for the minky. Which I'm actually going to do it this way first because it's a little crooked. So 16 by 16 inches. You need a lot of room when you're doing this project. Okay, now that you have your minky all cut out, what you're now gonna wanna do is, look at all that, do you see that? The outline? <sighs> Whatever, I'll pick all that up later. So you're gonna wanna make, lay your minky right side up. Put your fleece right side down so it's essentially right sides together and as you can see since we made the minky fabric about an inch larger we now have more wiggle room to use for the blanket so now what you're going to do is you're going to pin all around the sides and then once we get to the sewing machine i'll show you what the next steps are for getting this blanket done so now I'm going to fast forward to when we are cutting out our pieces for the embroidery section. Actually, before I cut to the next section, we need to make some markings. So it says for the 14 by 14, leave a gap approximately two inches by 2.5 inches. So we're going to do this around one of the corners. So let me get my smaller ruler, which is here. Now, since this is the first time we're doing this, I'm gonna do about a two and a half inch um, gap. So, let's see, so that's about, uh, let's see, I'm trying to figure out, okay. So for this, how this works is that you're gonna look at the corner here, so if you look at your ruler, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's on two and a half inches for both sides, and that's how you know how big to make your hole. So I have a pen here, I'm just gonna make little markings here. So there's the markings that I made for there for the opening. And I'm putting it in the, what corner is this? The, it's the, the upper left hand corner, just cause that's how I feel like doing it. So now I'm going to finish pinning and then we will meet back up.
All right, now that your blanket's all pinned, you're gonna put this to the side. And now we're gonna start cutting out the pieces for the applique fabric. All right, so for this design, I'm going to do the horns in this fabric and then everything else in the blue minky fabric. So let's get started here. Um, okay. So for this, this part, I'm not gonna give away any measurements because it is all in the pattern and I don't wanna give you guys away anything. Um, if it's in the pattern, I want you guys to purchase from the designer. Uh, so now I'm going to start cutting out the fabric for the horns. Or sorry, I'm going to be doing the um, the frill fabric. That's what I'm going to be doing first, um, and then the the other ones I'm going to be doing in uh, different colors. Cut out the wrong size. Sorry, I'm knocking you guys all over the place. Like I said, learning experience for us all. what way the fabric should go since this is directional. Okay. I guess I'll cut it out either way. Just in case. So like I said, I don't know which direction this is gonna go in, so once I just do the design, I'll let you know which way fabric should go, um, essentially because they are different lengths. So now that I cut out the fabric for the frill, now I'm gonna get my minky and do all the other pieces. Hopefully my phone won't die during this recording, but we'll see. Okay, so, got my minky. Probably should flip it around. 
All right. So now I'm gonna cut out all the other pieces. So there are two. Um, I'm gonna cut out the arms first. Again, make sure you're following the correct size chart um, based on the pattern. And you will wanna cut out two of these. I'll remember all of this. Okay, the arms are done. I have the frill cut out. Now for the face. Now I don't think I'm gonna cut out anything for the horns because I'm pretty sure I have some fabric in my stash with Heat and Mom Light on it. Um, so I don't have to worry about anything with the horns. So now I'm going to cut out the face and you wanna cut out one of these. Probably be messy when we get to the embroidery machine, but what can you do? Okay, and now the back of the head. We already cut out the blanket, so this is our last piece that we need to do for this project. This will be a fun one to make. All right, so there is the back of the head. So we got head of the back of the head, the horns I don't have to worry about, the face, which we cut out, the frill cut out, and then the arms and then of course a blanket. So now I think we're ready to go to the machine. So first I'm going to work on sewing up this baby blanket and I'll show you exactly what to do. All right, so like I said before, we are now ready to sew the blanket portion. It doesn't really matter where, if you do the blanket first versus the embroidery, but I just feel like doing the blanket first, so that's what I'm gonna do. So here is a blanket that we have all Nicely pinned, um, except remember the one corner, we don't have it pinned because we are going to be leaving that open. And keep in mind where your little marks are here for the opening. So now based on those marks, um, you are going to start sewing. So I'm gonna switch my stitch length to a longer stitch length because it tends to work better with Minky. Um, and now you're going to start where one of your, the, the openings are, so where one of the, the little lines that you made. And then you're gonna sew at about half an inch seam allowance. However, I don't think it really makes a difference which way you go. So like I said, start from the one tick, go all the way around, and then stop where the other one ends. And then I'll show you at the end what it looks like all sewn up. And slowly remove your pins as you go.
here I am coming up to the la the corner tick mark and I'm just going to stop right where that tick mark is and go back and forth a couple steps. All right, now that is all trimmed. That's one thing that I love about my sewing machine is that it automatically, you just press a button, it'll cut, cut the thread for you, which is nice on the front and the back. So now I'm just going to be removing all of the pins here and then I'm going to trim away any excess minky fabric. And then I'm also going to trim the corners, except of course the corner that we left open. So just continue unpinning. And you can just keep going all around. Now remember, keep it nice and open for that one corner, but other than that, you can trim everything down to, I believe it's about a quarter of an inch for what it said in the pattern. So just keep all of your minky pieces together and then throw it all away once you're done. I feel like I haven't done this before, but I feel like this portion is the portion that'll probably take the longest. Um, and of course, probably also sewing up all the, the pieces with the, the lovey and everything attached. Looks like we're coming up to our last long side here. trim your last corner and then throw away all the remaining minky fabric that you no longer need okay now what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to turn it right side out so go through that corner opening and then pull the fabric through I think this is gonna be adorable. And of course there's minky fine all over the place because we haven't closed up that seam. So now what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to roll the sides to make sure they're nice and pointy. So this side looks pretty good. Nice and pointy. And you're gonna to wanna to do that with all of the remaining sides as well. So just slowly roll it with your fingers. Or you could get a pair of scissors or something and shove it in the hole, um, which I'll do now because it's actually, this one's kind of tricky. Uh, that's not the opening, is it? No, there's the opening. So now I'm gonna put my scissors through and poke it through that hole, but doing it ever so gently so you don't bust the seam. And then do it for this side as well, and then I think that's good to go with the corners. All right, so there's all that. Now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna top stitch this entire blanket, except, of course, where this opening is. Again, you wanna leave the opening, well, open. Um, and I also just realized I actually forgot to include my name tag. So when you're sewing all around, I would probably do it in like, cause if it's gonna be like this, probably maybe like this corner or something for where the, but the tag will be. So in the lower right hand corner. So again, you do not wanna sew that opening closed. You're just gonna wanna top stitch the sides that we stitched. 
So it's about here where we should top stitch and I'm gonna top stitch at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna keep my stitch length to a stitch length of four. And remember, go back and forth a couple times and just top stitch and tuck the entire thing. Um, which of course, keeping in mind that opening and making sure you don't sew that closed because that's where we're going to attach the dinosaur. So just keep it all nice and flat and go all the way around. And kind of make sure it lays naturally too and not all bunched up. All right, now I'm going up to the last side here. Oh no, we still have another side, Durr. So all the way down that side, pick it up. Now this is where the corner is, so keep in mind where that corner opening is. Which actually, I think I did the corner wrong it should be over here but that's fine this is just it's the first go so it's fine so I'd probably do it sew it in the opposite corner that I did but you know you live and you learn uh, so here it is as you can see there's the opening there which you can't see because you're blind but it's fine do a top stitch, go back and forth, and cut your thread. So there you go. So like I said, it'll be in the corner here, the lovey. I just think it'll be really cute. So now I'm going to trim this thread. Now I'm going to get my laptop and put my designs onto the my USB drive. Um, and one thing to note for this pattern is that there are two embroidery files. Um, one is for the head, the other one er, for the arms. Um, I think the longest part to embroider will be the head because it has the mouth and the ears and all that fun stuff. So I think that'll probably take the longest, but I don't think it should take that long. So I'm now going to, like I said, get those designs on my computer, then we'll meet back up. All right, let me pull up the design on the machine. But in the meantime, um, the pattern calls for cutaway stabilizer. However, I used tearaway and no-show poly mesh stabilizer. Um, I was going to use just one layer of um, tearaway, but I didn't know if that would be enough stabilization, so I just added the poly mesh just to be safe. One thing I like about the poly mesh is that it's nice and well meshy, so shouldn't have any issues with that. Um, okay, so let me pull up the design, which should be going to do the arms first. So I'm going to set up the design. Okay. Let me grab my instructions here so I make sure I don't mess anything up. Okay. All right, so this will be simple. All it is is the placement and tack down stitch. Now again, this is for the arms, so I'm going to adjust you guys here so you can see what's going on. And I'll let you zoom in a bit as well. Okay, that looks good. Sorry for all the jumbledness. So I, it doesn't really matter what color you use for this since it'll all be hidden, so I'm using blue or purple thread that'll kind of help make the stitches stand out so it'll be easier to um, 
get all the, um, figure out where exactly to cut the fabric. So like I said, we're doing the arms first. First stitch is the, the outline stitch. down stitch is all done or the uh, outline stitch here are the two fabrics that you have for the arms so what you're going to want to do is sandwich them together right sides together so make sure they're nice and even which they are slide under the needle again make sure everything is nice and covered which it should be and now you're going to do the final tack down stitch. Let me just make sure. Yes. I'm gonna hold this together with my fingers because it'll probably slip and slide. It might be okay. So the arms are now done. Now I'm going to take it off the machine and I'll show you what the next step is. All right, so the next step is you're going to want to take it off the hoop, of course. And then you're going to want to tear away the tear away stabilizer. This shouldn't be an issue since the design went over the stitching twice when it did the tack down stitch. Okay. Now I'm going to get my larger scissors and I'm going to trim um, pro I think around all the edges. So it wants you to trim around the arms about a quarter of an inch as shown. Let's so hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. Again, a quarter of an inch. I'm assuming it'll probably want about, oh, it looks like it doesn't need that big of an opening for the arms, but I'll leave a good amount just in case, because you never know. So here's one arm, and I'll do the other arm. And I'll also be sure to cut the threads as well, because they're kind of long. Okay. So just keep trimming all around. I'm not used to embroidery projects being this quick. So one thing you wanna keep in mind is 
you're gonna need, of course, I'm gonna trim my threads over here, but it looks like Minky is just very crazy, so definitely keep a little vacuum cleaner around. So here's one of the arms, I have it all nicely trimmed. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to wiggle uh, if I can figure out how to do this, get the minky and turn it inside out. Okay. All right, it's, it's coming. Looks like you just kind of got to wiggle it through. Okay. That feels pretty good. So here's one, one arm all good to go. So I'm gonna set it to the side and then I'm gonna work on the other one. So I, what I do is I kind of poke a little bit through the hole here and then the part that I poked through, I start to pull through. So that's what I'm doing and feels like it's working. So that's, that's good and just slowly start pulling. Don't force anything. Gosh, I'm gonna have Minky all over me after this. All the little fur. Okay, and then I just roll it with my fingers and it feels like that just works the best for working out the seams. Um, okay, so poke at this one a little bit more because this one feels more natural. So here are both of the arms. So I actually didn't mention this in the beginning, but now you're gonna want to use your fiber fill. This is what you use to stuff like animals and stuff like that. I'm gonna grab a piece of it and just start shoving it in there, I guess. I'm gonna take little pieces though and slowly start pointing it through. Okay, there's the first piece. Again, I'm just slowly feeding piece by piece into here, starting to come together. Overall, not a bad project to do but the real test will be putting it all together and making it look decent. Okay. A little bit more. I don't know how much to fluff this thing up, so I just, I'll probably just Put as much in there as I can. Yeah, I definitely would recommend that you use tearaway and no-show poly mesh. Um, okay, so I see. So this is like the thumb. So the thumb points in. So this is what it should. This is what it should look like. As you can see, this is like a thumb, and I guess this is like a thumb. So that's kind of good to know. Um, grab another little bit. Again, I don't know how much to stuff this thing, but probably try to keep it as even as possible. You don't want one arm to be more stuffed than the other one. Um, probably this should be good. Um, a little bit more. Again, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> We're learning together, you guys. This will probably be a long video, but I hope you're ready for it. Okay, so that feels pretty good. It uh, looks pretty stuffed, so that's good. Uh, now I'm gonna move on to the next arm, and then we'll start doing the head, I suppose. That reminds me, I'll get the next design pulled up on my, sh my machine, so when I come back, we can just start automatically working on the head. 
So I'll probably fast forward this section because you just saw me stuff the other arm. All right, so here are the two arms completely stuffed. Um, I'll probably put magic clips on the, the ends here just to make sure that none of the, the fiber fill comes out. So now I'm going to do the same exact thing with hooping the stabilizer. So I'm doing tear away um, on the bottom and then I'm doing the no-show poly mesh on the top. So the no-show poly mesh will be um, right by the fabric and then you'll be able to easily tear away the the tear away stabilizer. So let's get to it. All right, so I have again my cutaway state or my tear away stabilizer with my poly no so poly mesh cutaway stabilizer. Um, now I'm all good to go. I have the head design pulled up. So the first, it's going to run the placement stitch for the frill, which again we're going to be doing in that fun dinosaur font to match the top of the blanket. So let's get started. So we did that. Now again, we're going to be using this frill, um, the outside fabric that we used for the top of the blanket, and we're going to place it right on top. And now it is going to do the good old tack down stitch. So let me just lower you guys a little bit here. Okay. So like I said, now it's going to do the tack down stitch. Um, honestly, I didn't think it would be this big, so I don't know how well it'll turn out, but either way, you can see the biggest design, but I probably would do the 5x7 from now. So now that I did that, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the inside here only. I'm going to leave the outside just like it is, but I'm just going to cut out the inside because now it is going to work on the face. All right, so like I said, I only cut the inside of the face and now I'm going to do the tack down stitch for the face. Now I'm going to get my fabric, place it directly over, um, let's 
see, and I would cut out a smaller size, so let me see. Okay, this is what we want. We want the smaller to be for the, the face. So you're gonna have two pieces, a big one and a small one. You want the small one for the face. Okay. Now it's gonna do the tack down stitch for the face. to trim around the face, which I realize now that I should have left an opening at the bottom. So I'll probably maybe redo that step. Probably should. All right, so I misplaced it. I put this fabric on top of here, but that was already tacked down, so this should have been moved down. Um, I'll redo that, and then I'll come back with you guys. All right, so I fixed it. I cut out a bigger piece of minky fabric. So like I said, now what you're gonna to wanna to do is cut outside of the fabric line instead of inside. So now I'm gonna do that and then I'll show you what to do next. Right now it is going to do the outline stitch for the, the horns and the nose. So now for this step, I'm going to be using this teal fabric. Sorry, I'm trying to look over the camera here. I'm gonna do it each section at a time. over here off camera. to cut out all these applique pieces and then when we come back 
I will add my water soluble stabilizer on top, um, especially when you're dealing with minky. If you just do the embroidery stitches, it could easily sink into the Mickey. Minky, not Mickey Mouse <laughs> or Mickey. Um, so I'm going to, like I said, cut out these applique pieces and I'll put on a layer of waterproof or a, a water soluble stabilizer and then um, we will get to work. All right, and now for the fun part, which is doing the satin stitches. So it's going to start doing the horns and the nose, and I decided to do a nice royal blue color for that, um, just to have different varieties of blues. So let's get started on these satin stitches. So now it is going to be doing the outline of the face, which we're going to be doing in a nice teal color. Now it is going to stitch the eyes. Now it's also going to do the mouth, which I'll probably just do in black as well. Now it's going to do the cheeks, which I'm going to do in yellow because there are some little bits of yellow throughout the main fabric, so I kind of want to incorporate that with this design as well. All right, so now that we're all done with the satin stitches, what you're gonna wanna do is first of all, take out your pins and of course your water soluble stabilizer because we're all done with the satin stitches. And now you're going to get your larger piece of minky here and place it over this design. And making sure everything is nice and covered. which it looks like it's good to go. And again, you wanna face it right side down. 
So now what you're going to do, you're going to do the tack down stitch for this fabric. Um, it doesn't do the basting stitch because you already kind of have a general outline of what the um, where it's going to stitch because it's going to stitch literally in the same area. So uh, now we're going to hit play or start and then we'll do the tack down stitch for the outline of the entire head. like on the design that there's like a phantom stitch which according to the instructions you don't need to do so we are all done with embroidering the head now and now we will kind of do the similar steps of what we did with the arms and uh, get stuffing all right so same thing with the arms is you take it out of the hoop tear away the tear away stabilizer Again, get as much of this off as you can. Now, I don't think it really matters if you trim away the threads or not because it's not like anybody will see them because they'll be hidden inside. So just keep that in mind. Again, tear away as much as you can so it's not all crinkly. Try to be fairly gentle with these stitches because although it went around twice, twice, you don't want the stitches to come undone. I'm only going to trim the stitches, the, the random threads on the bottom because I don't think it really matters on the sides and stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to do here. Now you're gonna to wanna to do the same exact thing which, which you did with the uh, arms. So you're gonna trim around about a quarter of an inch all the way around, including the bottom it appears. Yeah. So just slowly make your way around. It might be kind of tough if you're dealing with multiple layers like I am. Careful not to trim any of the stitches that you're not supposed to. Because you can see here I got pretty close with that one, so you don't want that to happen. So again, about a quarter of an inch. It can be kind of tricky with these different curves, but you just gotta roll with them. I'm looking forward to seeing how this turns out. I think it's going to be super cute. Again, careful around these curves.
okay. And trim the bottom. Okay, so it looks like you should be trimming this bottom portion as well. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. Okay, you turn the head right side out and lightly stuff with polyfill. So here we go, let's see how this baby looks. Super easy to turn out. Then again, slowly poke out your corners. I'll use my little scissors here to gently poke the corners out. There's one, two, There's another one. Might feel a little weird, but that's okay. I'm probably gonna roll them with my fingers first and try to pop them out as much as I can that way. Oh, this is so cute. Now do you top stitch or iron or? We'll have to see. Here's one that hasn't popped yet. Right, here's our head. Um, lightly stuffed with polyfill. All right. Probably need a good amount of polyfill for this one. Oh yeah, make it nice and thick, but not too thick. All right, lightly stuffing. Well, not lightly, but stuffing. We're getting there. I think a little bit more. Oh, it looks like you, if you prefer, you can stuff head after it is attached to blanket. Honestly, that probably would be easier, so I'm just gonna take all of this out. Okay. I'm gonna just put that to the side here. But like I said, it, you can stuff it before or after you do your sewing. So I'm gonna do my stuffing after. Okay. Now it looks like we're gonna go to the sewing machine and start sewing it on to the blanket. All right, so I will go over what I'm doing now. Um, so here is the corner that we haven't sewn at all. So just big and floppy. We're gonna let it be big and floppy, but you're gonna put it, so here is the stitch that we last stitched. So this is where you want the foot of your um, needle to be. So again, you want it to be at an angle. So from the last stitch here to the last stitch over here, that's where you're gonna want to go in that direction. So like I was saying, I use these kind of points as I think thumbs, so I have them facing inward because for a hand it's facing towards your body, so that's kind of what I'm thinking for that. These are all equally stuffed. Um, I wouldn't say one's more stuffed than the other. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place it along this line. So I'm gonna lift up my presser foot and push it down. I'm doing about a quarter of an inch overlay um, from probably do three and a half inch st stitch allowance just to make sure I secure everything. So here's the one arm ready to go and then the other arm will be, I'll say about here. So it'll be evenly spaced. So let's stitch this one and again, it looks like it's a little bit before this yellow part here, so I will say about here is where we're going to stop. 
So don't forget to back stitch. And it'll probably feel weird, but that's okay. Again, keeping both even. There we go. So keep stitching till you get to the next one and move your presser foot up and down just to make sure that you get that. Okay, so there are our arms attached. Now I'm going to trim that loose thread. Perfect. All right, so now it says stuff the unfinished corner of the blanket inside the head of the dino. Now it looks like we're all done with the, the machine here, so I'm going to turn it off and then I'll get myself thready needles and I'll show you what the next step is. Actually, sorry about that guys, I forgot the next step was just to attach the front of the head to the design. So we just stitched on the arms here, so that's all good to go. Now it says, you will place a head face down, lining up the head with the, with the arms. So it looks like it's gonna be like this. Um, so the head to the blanket on the front side of the head only. So it looks like it'll be like this, which feels kind of weird. I think this will just be kind of a finicky part and then it should be fine. So try to make sure the head is lined up evenly as possible, which that feels pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack down the front lining, so make sure it's nice and kind of flat looking. And line it up with the arms. And then probably sew it at a quarter of an inch again. Again, I'm doing a stitch length of 3.5 because that's just what feels best. So go back and forth a few times, secure those stitches, make sure you don't stitch down anything you're not supposed to. And again, we are just sewing down the front so it is the head facing towards the arms because you wanna be able to hide the seam, which is why we're doing the head first. And then just slowly fold the seam. Keep it all even. And then go back and forth a few times. So let's see how that one turned out. Ah, look at that, you guys. How freaking cute. Oh, customers are gonna love this. So perfectly to the front, perfectly in the center. As you can see, there's the nose with the middle of the arms. So now you will want to stuff it. And then after you stuff it, then we will do the hand sewing, which I'll show you what that looks like. Right now I have my thread that I literally just used for my sewing machine. I have my self-threading needle. Ooh, first time. And then I'm gonna thread the thread through the needle, leave a good amount of tail. Now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna tuck all of these extra bits. So these two flappy bits, you wanna tuck that in to the blanket. So now you can see, once you sew up this hole, it will all be covered and it'll look nice and fresh. And again, there is an invisible seam 
you can't even, there is no seam. It's inside the seam for the front, which is why we left the back open because nobody really pays attention to the back too much. So leaving the back open should be fine. So now what I'm gonna do, probably show you my lap because that's what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go through one end, through the other, and fold this in as well to keep it all nice and even. And I'm gonna go through here. I know that there's different like stitch types and things like that, but I don't really know too much about it. So I'm just gonna do a, um, a random stitch. So like what I like to do is I'm going to thread this open end through the other open end and I'm going to thread it like so. So again, adding the two open ends, threading it through the needle. Well, I had it through the needle. Move this to the side. Okay. Now again, both open ends are through the needle. And you wanna pull it nice and taut. Or was that a good idea? So, Let's see here. I'll just thread it through the one. And then what I'll do is I'll make a little knot on the bottom here. Point it through there. Did that do anything? No. Oh, I know what to do. So I'm gonna make a little knot at the bottom to secure this. As you can see, I don't really do this, so it's all brand new to me, so I'm gonna make that nice and tight. Probably triple knot it, to be completely honest with you, just so it doesn't come undone. So do a good old triple knot this to the side so I can concentrate. Luckily with this design, since it is blue, uh, that you don't even really notice this white thread at all. To make another knot. So that's a nice triple knot. Now that won't come undone. And then you just keep sewing. Doing your hand sewing. So again, make sure Try to keep your stitches fairly close to each other. I would say about maybe an eighth of an inch away from each other and just keep pulling your thread through. Okay. And then just Keep going and then we will meet up once I'm all done with this and look at the finished product. All right, so here is the finished product. Um, it actually is reverse on the, um, the, uh, the camera here. So it's actually on the, oh, actually. Yeah, it's on the, when you're looking at it this way, it's on the left-hand side, but it looks like it's on the other side, I don't know. So here it is. So here is the top. There's the little arms. Um, all nicely sewn. Now you stuffed away. There's the head. All the beautiful embroidery that we did. There's the back. I still have to kind of sew back this up in here because I'm not the best hand sewer. Um, which honestly, you can probably, if you wanted to, you can just uh, use the sew it closed with your machine. Um, I don't think it really makes much of a difference to be honest with you. So if you wanted to close this back with the machine, I think it's fine. So I'll probably do that from now on, but here it is. 
So we got the nice beautiful blue minky on the back and then we got this adorable um, fabric on the front and I really like how I incorporated this front fabric with the blue minky fabric and it has bits of yellow in it. So I think it turned out super cute. So very beginner friendly, pretty easy to make to be honest. Um, it's just the hand sewing that I found the most troubling but that's because I'm not the best hand sewer. So this is the, again, the 14 by 14 inch size. I think it turned out perfect. Um, I think this would be perfect for a baby, to be honest. So, um, like I said, I did the six by 10 um, embroidery design for this. Um, again, it's from Designs by Juju. I'll put a link in the description down below for this specific design so you can hopefully purchase it and make it yourself. But in a nutshell, that was how to make this beautiful lovey. Um, I think it's so cute. I think it'd be adorable, especially with like a name embroidered on the back. Like it could be like a birth date or a name or it can be really anything. So this would be a great like baby shower gift, new mom gift. I'm planning on probably selling these at this upcoming craft show that I have to do, um, which is on June 4th. So I think these are great for those sorts of events. New parent gifts baby shower gifts. If you're meeting somebody and you don't know what to get them, you can just get them something like that. And they have tons and tons of designs. I think they have like, uh, let's see, they have ducks, they have lambs, they have, I don't think they have deer, but they have like frogs and I believe a fox and um, all different sorts of things for this. So since I already had this fabric, I thought this would make a great tutorial. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing as well um, and leave a comment down below on what you think of this design. Like I said, they have probably about 10 of these different designs. So not just with a beautiful, cute little dinosaur here, but they have tons of other ones, not only for boys, but for girls, for gender neutral items. So I'm planning on adding a ton of these items to my shop, but I think this makes a great, cute little addition. And I love the little, little hands involved so it can like wave at you and stuff like that. So Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.